Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 32. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to add a sword to our game. So let's just bring up the code and I'll tell you what we're going to do. So inside... actually let's just run our game first of all, there we go. So at the moment our player can punch and when um, we punch or we make our player punch by hitting the Z key we spawn the punch entity, which is this uh, sort of puff of air here, and when that entity collides with other entities, we add some knockback and uh, we make a few things happen. And that's all inside of our punch class. So let's take a quick look at this guy. So we have a punch sprite and a punch sound, we have a collision method and we have a create method. And the create method creates a punch entity for us, um, it sets a status on that entity so that the entity removes itself after six ticks and then it returns the entity so we can add it to the game. And that's uh, pretty much all there is to it. So what we'll do in this episode is we'll create a sword.lua class uh, to go, um, you know, based on our punch class and we'll also tidy a few things up as we go. So I've got a sword sprite um, ready to go. I drew it off camera because it's not really that complicated. Um, and I've also just created some scaffolding for our sword class already. So let's um, let's get started. So we know that we'll need we know that we'll need our entity class. So local entity equals require source logic entity and we know that we need to create our entity um, and return it inside of sword.create and sort of all of our... Um, or we only have one so far but we're going to make their create methods look similar um, so we want to start out by passing in a position to our create function so we take a position then we can say our instance is equal to entity.create There we go. And entity.create takes a couple of arguments. One is a position, and if we look at punch.lua, we can work out what the other ones are. Uh, so it's a sprite, position, and actually, while we're here, let's pull these values out into variables so we know what they are later. So speed, no movement equals nil. So this zero value here is actually the speed, but I'm going to replace it with a variable just so um, when we read the code later it actually makes sense. Even though it's zero, um, let's store it somewhere, give it a name. And this uh, nil value here is the movement, uh, which we don't have for our punch, so let's just create a no movement variable which we'll also set to nil. And now it's just a uh, a bit easier to tell what's going on. So inside of our, where are we? Inside of sword.lua, let's do the same. Speed is going to be zero. We don't have any movement. We do have a sprite. So we'll just say um, sword sprite equals, and this means we'll need our sprite local or our sprite class source I think it's in graphics sprite and so our sword sprite will uh, we just need to do a uh, sprite dot create um, assets sprites sword dot png So we need our sprite. I think the next one was speed. Or was it position? I need to uh, get a good autocomplete so I know what these arguments are, but I don't have one set up at the moment. So we'll just check the punch class again. It was sprite, position, speed, movement, collision. So sprite, position, speed, movement, collision. So we have most of these. 
But let's deal with collision right away. We also need to return the instance of our class. All things won't work later. There we go. So collision is a function which will take, I think it takes self, um, the entity we've collided with and the game state, but we will um, again just look at our punch class to make sure. Yeah, self, entity, and game. And the first thing we're going to do is say, or we're going to check that we haven't collided with the player because um, if the player could punch themselves or stab themselves then you know you wouldn't get very far so we'll just check that we're not dealing with the player character and if we're not then we'll say entity take damage um, and let's do a bit more damage uh, because we are stabbing them with a sword we're not punching them um, and the other thing we need to do is add a knockback status. So we'll need to require a knockback as well. Let's uh, just cheat and grab this line here. I'll close this because I keep opening it instead of sword.lua. There we go. There's our knockback. Entity add status knockback dot create and this takes a duration I think. There we go. Duration and again let's pull these out into uh, variables. Duration equals twenty strength equals eight. So because adding a sword shouldn't be too complicated, I'm going to spend a bit more time in this episode tidying things up as we go. Um, partly just to show people how I like to tidy up code. Um, yeah, and partly because I want to... Uh, uh, hopefully I'm going to be working on this code base for a long time. Um, so if I can just keep tidying it as I go, it'll make it more fun and easier to work with. I don't want to have to spend a lot of time working out what these uh, variables are later on. So we've got duration and strength. So let's do the same thing here. Duration. Um, maybe let's go for a slightly shorter knockback duration with slightly less strength this time because... What was my strength value before? Eight. Good. Um, because we're stabbing people, we're not punching them. Uh, duration. Oh dear, I keep uh, forgetting what the... Duration, entity, position, and strength. Duration, entity, self dot position. So this is just the position of our punch um, entity, which will be on self. And then strength. There we go, so we now have a collision for our sword. The other thing we would like to do is play a sound when we create our sword. So um, I also made a sword sound off camera, so um, let's load that in as well. So it's sound sword.wave and the type will be static. So we covered this um, when we made the punch a couple of episodes ago, so I won't go into too much detail on the uh, sound. But what we'll do is when we create our sword, we will play the sword sound. So we can say sword sound play. Okay, so now let's think about using our sword class. And to get us started, we will just um, 
wire it into our player. So eventually we'll have an inventory system which manages the different things we're holding, but for now um, we want to get this into a state where we can test it, see it working in our game. So I'm just going to add a new action um, onto the player. So at the moment our player has this action1 function, and this is what happens whenever we press the Z button. We can actually see where this is wired up by looking at our game state class going down to our key pressed method inside of game state and we see that every time a key is pressed we check what that key is and if it's Z then we just call action 1 on player and we pass in the game state so we're now going to create an action 2 on player um, and this is also an opportunity to tidy some things up inside of the player class as well So if key equals, and we'll say x this time, then self player action 2 self. So our player has an action 2, and we also need to make it action 2, make it available on the instance of our player. So now if we run the game, oops, where did the, uh, there we go, um, and hit X, nothing happens, but nothing crashes, which is positive. So now let's think about actually adding our sword. So we'll need to require it. So at the top, we'll do um, sword require source items sword. And if we look at what happens in action one, we can actually uh, make a lot of this code reusable. So we grab the current room out of our game state. Uh, we grab the player's position. We have a couple of offsets, which should work for our sword as well, because um, so the offsets just tell us where we want to place the entity or where we want to place the sprite on the screen. And um, our sprites are the same size. They're all eight by eight pixels. Um, and then we just call add entity to the current room and we do some interrupt stuff. Now the interrupt stuff down here um, is just designed to stop the player moving um, a small amount whenever they perform an action and it actually uses our old method of um, writing statuses so we can definitely um, fix this to do use new method for statuses. Um, but to start with let's extract all of this into something we can reuse. So we'll create a new method called, um, and we'll make it a private method called uh, spawn entity. And this will need self, the entity to spawn. So we'll say entity to spawn and the game. And then we can do pretty much the same as we do in action one, except make the entity that we're going to spawn um, a variable instead. So we need the current room. We need the player's position. And we'll need to set a couple of offsets, but I'll just call them offset this time. Let's say, yeah, offset equals 10. And then I think we check the position to see if the player is facing left. And if they are, we use a different offset so that the entity spawns behind them. Uh, minus 12. Oops, minus 12. And and then we just call current room add entity. And then here we'll call entity to spawn dot create, and this needs a position which uh, we also create. And for our position, we just do x y z, and whether we're facing left or not. But we just add the offset to x. So pos dot y 
pos.z and pos.left. So now we should be able to replace all of this with spawn entity self entity to spawn. Ah, the autocomplete actually uh, worked that time. Self entity to spawn and game and the entity to spawn is going to be punch in this case. So let's see if this works. Great, so now we can do the same thing for action 2. I'm going to say spawn entity self and the entity to spawn will be sword. And we still need to pass in game. Ah, great, there we go. So we haven't actually added a way of removing our sword yet, but it's starting to work. So let's fix that now. So if we look at sword create, we don't actually add our status to remove um, to remove it, which is or which we currently do in our punch class down here. So let's actually extract this status into a new class as well. So inside of logic statuses, where's logic? We now have a statuses, or since a few episodes ago, we made this statuses folder to hold statuses we want to reuse. So in here, let's make a new status called remove self. Let's say local remove self. New table return remove. Oops, that should be return remove self. And then remove self dot create is going to be a function and we'll need our status class local status uh, equals require source logic I think source logic status and then our instance of remove self will be equal to a status. Our status will take, I think we just need a duration for this, so we'll do status.ticks on the duration to get the uh, time in actual game time, but we want this status to last for, and then we take a function, so status actually takes a couple of functions, I think it takes an on done and on apply and an on tick function, we'll just check. Yep, on done, on apply and on tick. So we just need to provide an on done for this and our on done function takes the status itself, it takes the owner I think and it takes the game and here we can just call owner done and we need to return the instance as well return inst so now inside of punch we should be able to replace all of this with add status um, remove self dot create six as long as we require remove self at the top local remove self equals require uh, source logic statuses dot remove self Let's see. Ambiguous syntax function call x new statement near closing bracket remove self line 7. Let's see uh, what's going on with that. Ah. I think that should fix it. Yes. 
good, so our punch still works. So now for our sword, we just need to instance add entity, remove self, create, and again we'll make it last for six uh, ticks. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Function remove self equals require. Okay, let's give it a try. Oops, attempt to call method add entity a nil value. Ah yes, this should be add status, not add entity. Good, there we go, we have our sword, um, which is much more powerful probably too powerful, but we'll worry about balance um, and other things a little later. Cool, so let's just come back and finish up um, rewriting this to use our new um, use the new status syntax. And the reason we want to do this is because we don't want these two lines to become separated. Um, so we're going to put them all inside of the status create method. We'll just do that. Um, put that on a new line. So our status takes an on tick. Um, oh no, it takes an on done and on apply and an on tick. So we just need to provide the on apply, uh, which will be self dot interrupt movement equals true. Uh, because we know that the on done will set it back to false, then we can remove this. And we can also, a nicer way of doing this, looking at it, would actually be um, to follow a principle of object-oriented programming called tell don't ask. So instead of um, instead of sort of adding a status directly, we're just going to tell the player to interrupt their own movement. So let's make a function called um, interrupt movement. We'll pass in the player, or self, because it's a private method on player. And then we'll do all of this. So then rather than passing, um, rather than passing objects around, we can actually write um, interrupt movement self, which makes our code a lot more readable and we're writing in terms of the behavior we want, uh, sort of not in terms of how we want to pass data structures around. And that just makes our code a bit more readable and a bit more object oriented. So now action two just clearly says we're spawning a sword and we're interrupting some movement. Um, and action one says we're spawning a punch and we're interrupting some movement. Let's just check everything works. I might actually lower the damage on sword slightly so we can check to see if the knockback is working as well. Knockback, damage, here we go. Let's say three instead. There we go, I think there's a tiny bit of knockback. It doesn't seem to be doing too much. Let's uh, maybe crank it back up. Yeah, that feels a bit better. Right, let's finish the episode there. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I think we'll... I'm not sure what we'll do in the next episode, but we'll, we'll do something fun. 
Thanks for watching, if you do have a few seconds, a like or subscribe does go a long way to showing me that you're enjoying the channel, and as always you can get the code in the description, and feel free to ask any questions, add any comments you like. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time, bye for now.